Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. This tutorial was going to show you guys basically how to customize the standard import preset that comes with the Lightroom 4 preset system. Now, for most of you, you guys won't actually have any need to adjust this preset because it's designed for those that shoot on RAW formats on Canon and Nikon cameras, which should be the majority of you. But the following is a few situations where you guys might want to adjust the standard import preset. Number one, if you guys shoot with a JPEG workflow. If you guys shoot with a JPEG workflow, then that means that your camera is going to apply in-camera processing to those images, and the standard import preset might become too powerful on those images that are shot in JPEG format. Number two is for those of you that aren't shooting on Canon or Nikon branded cameras, you do want to double check just to make sure the standard import preset is correct for your camera. We can't possibly do all the testing for every camera out there, but we can show you guys exactly how to adjust for each different camera and for your own style and preference. And the third and final situation where you might want to adjust the standard import preset is if you don't have a generalized workflow. For example, the majority of photographers would take kind of a variety of pictures, from landscapes to urban pictures to portraits to studio shots. They kind of have a whole smattering of photos, and that's what this preset's designed for. But if your workflow is, say, specifically, if all you do is headshots, and you're basically shooting, you know, three-quarter headshots or close-up portraits the entire time, then certain settings on the standard import preset, again, might be too powerful, and you might want to adjust it down. So now that we've identified who might want to make adjustments to the standard import preset, let's show you guys exactly how. Now what we would say is load up five images from typical scenes that you're shooting. Whatever it might be, whether it's landscapes or portraits or whatever it is, load up five of your typical images that are correctly exposed and they have semi-correct white balances. Now from here what you're going to do is select one of those images and jump in the develop module and make sure that the standard import preset is applied. If not, you can apply it this time. Now after the import presets applied, there's just a few things that we want to check. So I'm going to hit Control-1 or Command-1 on a Mac to bring up my basic panel. And what we want to do is, I probably would say to, uh, for the most part, leave the highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. Leave the setting alone for the most part. I mean, if you guys want to make minor tweaks to it, you can. But this setting is a very general setting that should work for most cameras and for most images. Now what I would say is visit the clarity and vibrance. Uh, for those of you that shoot JPEG, uh, you guys are getting in-camera processing and that means that when you bring it into Lightroom and you're applying another layer of basically clarity and vibrance to that image it could become too powerful. So with these five images that you have loaded what you want to do is just double check and make sure that you don't have too much or too little clarity and vibrance applied to those images. Now if you do say want to take clarity up I definitely wouldn't recommend taking it over 40. For those of you that primarily just shoot headshots and that's all you do you might want to leave clarity say at 0 or even negative 10 to keep skin nice and soft and make sure that the details aren't being too far enhanced with that mid-tone contrast. But for the majority of you around 20 to 30 should be the right setting. Next, vibrance. Again, 20 is a good general setting, but for JPEG shooters, 20 might be a little bit too much because your camera is going to basically add additional in-camera vibrance and saturation depending on your picture styles and your settings in camera. So if you need to take that up or down, just know that that's here as well. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump down to the detail panel. We just want to visit sharpening. And the way that you do that is basically this. What I would say is uh, make sure that you are zoomed into one to one. So we're going to click to zoom in on the face. And, uh, and you want to basically zoom in just to the sharp area. If you're shooting portraits, you want to zoom on the face. If you're shooting landscapes, zoom in on your area of focus. You know, just zoom in on, the, uh, on that area in those images that you are focusing on. Make sure your navigator is set to one to one zoom. We're going to close this left side panel so we have a little more working space. And all you're going to do is when you're at 100% crop, you're just going to adjust that sharpening setting until it looks right. Now as you can see with the default setting for the standard import preset on Nikon and Canon cameras that are shooting in RAW, this is going to come out looking really nice and it's going to be not too sharp but just the right amount. Now if you're shooting in JPEG, again, in-camera processing is being added to those images and so additional sharpening could end up being too much. So you might want to just adjust it down for those that shoot JPEG. Also, for those of you that have specialized workflows, or maybe shoot on particular cameras, like say, uh, when we were shooting on our Phase 1, a medium format camera shooting at 80 megapixels, this standard sharpening setting was way too powerful. Uh, it was doing, oh, it was basically over sharpening our images. So again, kind of visit it based on your workflow, and if you have a very specific workflow, you may want to adjust this a little bit up or a little bit down. But for the most part, the 71.5 and 30 setting should be about right. 
Now I'm going to zoom back out and the last thing that we're going to visit is the lens corrections. Now this lens correction we have our lens vignetting correction set to plus 30 amount and 30 for the midpoint and what this is going to do is that for most uh, Canon and Nikon cameras shooting with typical lenses this is just going to correct the natural vignetting that occurs on the edges of the frame. Uh, it's a very subtle setting and so if there isn't basically any natural vignetting you're not really going to notice the effect being applied in most cases. Now if you're constantly shooting and basically you're you're, you're never getting any vignetting, then you may want to adjust this down. Or if you're getting a ton of vignetting, you might want to increase the amount so that it basically brightens up the edges even further. But at 30-30, it's a very subtle setting again. For most, uh, for most shooters, this should be right about where you want it. Alright, so after you make these three adjustments to the basic detail and corrections, that's really all you need to do to that basic standard import setting. Now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go back to our presets. You're going to right click on your standard import preset and you're going to click update with the current setting. What we want to do is make sure you hit check all because we want the standard import setting to be a reset uh, setting. So basically at any point in time if you ever want to reset and get back to that original import you can click that and it's going to reset everything in the image to get back to that original. Once you're done with that you hit update. I'm not going to hit update right now because we didn't make any changes. We don't need to do anything. But you're just going to hit update and then what you're going to do is go back to the other four images that you loaded up and you're going to test that preset on each of those images and make fine-tuning modifications based on what the general uh, consensus is from image to image. So if you find from image to image it's generally too sharp, you're going to make a minor modification to sharpness and then update the preset and move on from there. Now at this point guys we showed you guys how to customize the standard import develop preset as well as in the last tutorial how to create an import preset that applies that standard develop preset to every single photo that you're bringing to Lightroom. So from here on out guys it's time to start developing. We've got a ton of great tutorials coming for you guys. We know you're going to absolutely love the Lightroom 4 preset system.